So in your travels, I mean, you in, carb in chasing after all these carbon um, traders, as it were, you really did go, go out in the world to see. Can you tell me a few stories about yeah, what you, you know, out there? Yeah, I can. I mean, what we did that is really, I think, the f first and the first ever, I think, in, 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 uh, in any kind of, kind of documentary or any kind of TV show is uh, we actually went out and looked at carbon credits to see what you got. You know, most people buy a carbon credit, they buy something on the internet. Right. Even companies, they'll see a project, and so it's, it's, a, it's a number, and they have serial numbers often, um, and they're audited at sometimes. Usually they are, the real ones. But what we did is we went and looked at what you get. So if you're, you know, if you're buying a carbon credit from, uh, uh, you know, so, some, somewhere, I went around and looked and said, where is that carbon credit produced and who is producing it? And we found some really surprising, um, you know, uh, sort of revelations Can in that. Can you give me a few examples? Well, one, for example, is we went to, uh, uh, I went to a company that was selling carbon neutral funerals in London, England. Okay. So basically the dead want to be carbon neutral, apparently. And so I thought, well, that's interesting. Now, we talked to the woman who was selling those credits, and then we found a company that she was buying these credits from, and it was actually owned by J.P. Morgan. And then we looked at that company, and we, they wouldn't talk to us, but we thought we looked at what carbon credits they had, and I looked around, around their, at all their projects and suddenly found myself in India, in one of the poorest villages in India where people make a dollar a day. And these, these villagers had basically given up their... Um, they're, they're diesel engines to pump water in favor of human-powered wooden treadles like Stairmasters to pump, pump right. the water. And they made carbon credits because they didn't use fossil fuel. And when you have a million farmers doing that, you make millions of dollars. Uh, you were also in the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, in the Philippines, we went to another UN endorsed, or one that will be soon endorsed by the UN uh, Carbon Credit Project, which was, um, uh, it's, this is happening in North America too, it, which was a dump that was capturing methane, yeah. burning the methane to create carbon dioxide, but because methane has got a value of 22 times more toxic, I guess, to the yeah. atmosphere in theory than carbon dioxide, when you burn one ton of methane, you get 21 carbon credits, roughly, and this dump had started to do this, and they were making a, a, up to $100 a million dollars a year in carbon credits, and wow. there's one dump in Manila, outside of Manila. What was interesting there, though, is that this dump was the site in 2000 of a massive av garbage avalanche that killed hundreds of people uh, during a monsoon, and the, um, and the same people were there uh, making this dump work. And so, in a sense, this dump had been turned into a carbon credit farm. At the same time, you still had these thousands of people who were making pennies a day running this, the, the, you know, this, the, this really, uh, you know, kind of awful, uh, awful place to live. It really does sound fascinating. I mean, uh, but, you know, you have, we have Copenhagen the conference coming up on the 14th of December. Um, you know, there are all these skeptics also saying, well, you know what, the Earth has been cooling for the last 10 years or so. I mean, why are we going to pell-mell into this, um, into this uh, draconian curbs to uh, greenhouse gas emissions? What do you say to them? Well, you know, I think um, I've, I'm an agnostic on, on this in the sense as a journalist, I, I actually look at it. anybody who makes a case uh, for or against, I try to look at and, and see what, how relevant they are. Um, I come, at, come to this from the position that uh, being a skeptic is good. Being an ideologue is probably not. Um, it's good to listen to minority scientists. It's also good to heed the majority of scientists. I mean, you know, we have a scientific method. It's based on right. the majority of evidence. And uh, most of our scientists in the world have, have decided that global warming is happening. The last 10 years of cooling, um, we'll see how the numbers break out over the next 10 years. Right. Um, if, if it's correct and it goes on for the next 50 years, we don't have a problem. And that'll be great. But, you know, we'll see if that happens. Uh, I think what, what but you... But you're what, telling me that the carbon trading and, you know, kind of cap and trade, all of that is here to stay, whatever uh, one's feelings might be. It's as here to stay as, you know, any sort of economic, I think, you know, tool that we use when we, when we, we think it has utility. The reason carbon car cap and trade is here and carbon taxing is because our leaders and our scientists and now our Fortune 500 companies, including energy companies, right. have realized that this is a problem that we have to deal with, or at least a it's a potential problem. You know, either What other side of, of, of the fence you are on global warming is that the fact is, is that this is now a bottom line item. In, the Br in, in British Columbia, if you look at the, the British Columbia budget, you will see a line, there's the historic line, and it says carbon. Right. And if you look at that line, you'll, you will see hundreds of millions and soon to be billions of dollars that are, have a monetary right. value, and it's carbon, and it includes carbon taxing, and it's going to soon include cap-and-trade in British Columbia, and we're actually just joining 
and catching up to what's going on in Europe. So this is here, and uh, it, the only way it's going to disappear is if we really do have a consensus that global warming is, is really not a threat. Um, it seems like in this case, green really literally means green. I mean, Green, there's, money. there's money to be made. Green, green means money, and green is also going to, uh, I mean, what's going on with carbon, car, what's, what we're going to see is a, is a global carbon tariff, and the United States is going to lead this, and they're going to put a price on everybody else's carbon. And the, the reason for that is that the world's biggest economy is more efficient in creating a unit of GDP than, any other, uh, th th than China. So basically, for them, they want to penalize anyone who uses more carbon, and that's going to be a way of extracting wealth and creating trade, and so carbon has become a new currency. So welcome to the real politic. Um, um, it's, uh, it sounds fascinating. I would love to watch the program on November 26th. Um, Carbon Hunters on CBC in the evening, I assume? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. on CBC on November 26th. Thank you, Miro. Thanks, Rizal.